Okay, so you're all very welcome. Um, Sarah, we're delighted to have you. That's wonderful to be here, Paul. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Brilliant. So um, first question I want to ask you is, um, we want to get into this work that you guys are doing with Aduco and with Tony Quinn and stuff like that. But I want to go back in your own life a little bit and ask you about, you had quite a kind of interesting life before you came into all this. You had a film, you're working in the film career. I know you were in New York. I remember you mm -hmm. mentioned Tribeca, all this kind of thing. So yeah. I just want to ask you, in, in terms of your own, you know, we'll talk a little bit about how your life was and how busy your life was and what kind of, what kind of in the industry you were in, but also to ask you, were you a spiritual seeker? Um, where did your life lead you at that time? And how, you know, how did it all flow for you at that point? I suppose, yeah, I would say from a very young age as a child, I was always um, fascinated by what the real purpose of life was. And I remember, I actually remember as a kid, I used to say to my mom, I said, mom, it's like, there's something going on over here that people are missing. I said, everyone's looking in this direction. The real stuff is going on over here. And my mom would say, well, look, you're nuts. Just go out and play, forget about it. You're fine. And um, I used to, and I had a, my godfather when I was young, used to say to you, used to say things to me when I was a kid. And he'd say, you know what, Sarah, the only moment that you can depend on is the one right now. And he said, that, that's all you need to know. And he'd say things like that to me, or he'd, he'd talk about following the light. He, he used to talk about how sunflowers are the most incredible flowers because their only job in the world is to follow the light. So I suppose I was always, I always had this um, seeking part of me, knowing there had to be something more. And I had a very, as, you, as you've alluded to, I had a very varied career and background and everything. And I think part of that was probably an attempt to search for that more within all these different places in my life. And I thought, you know, um, I had a vision actually of going to New York. I had a vision that going to New York would be a really good thing to do. And I saw myself literally being carried across the Atlantic Ocean and landing in New York. So I went there and I went to drama school and I studied acting and I had a film production company and um, I actually had a film that screened Can a number of years ago. I, uh, I did a bit of acting, I had a, I had a whole load of stuff um, happen over the years. And then I moved, into, um, I moved into the corporate world. So I actually had, I had a corporate job with a major multinational um, and I'm pretty sure that everybody in the audience has one of their products in their house right now. But um, and I had a very, I had a very successful career with them. And I was, um, I suppose, like if I was to look at my life and I was to look around in in the in the matrix type world where you measure success and what you have, you could have looked at my life and thought, oh gosh, you know, this is this is excellent. I have everything that think that people think they're supposed to have to make them happy but I knew that there was something missing. There was definitely something missing. And a number of years ago, I was actually at, um, a friend was screening a film in Tribeca. And I went to the screening of the film and afterwards got invited to the after party. And it was one of those situations where it was wall to wall celebrity and there were people dying to get in and there was paparazzi everywhere. And I remember having a moment in that, looking around thinking, okay, this is supposed to be the pinnacle of what people want, you know, in, in certain places, like even within the film industry. And I remember looking around the room, I said, none of these people actually impressed me. None of them. I wasn't, I just thought, well, gosh, if this is it now, do I really want to, is this, is this it really basically was what I was asking myself. So I left and I remember leaving the party and my friends like, oh, why are you going? What's happening? I said, no, honestly, I said, I said, I'm actually just going to go and walk. And I left, that was actually in April, 2017. And I walked the streets of New York and I went back to where I was staying and I made a decision. I said, no, something has to change. There has to be more. And at that point in my career, in my corporate career, I was actually, I had been offered um, a promotion. So I had the choice of going, uh, at that time I wasn't living in New York, but I had the choice of going back to New York or going to Dubai and taking a role there. And it would have been a really big step up in my career. It would have been, um, you know, quite a successful promotion, but I just still didn't feel that was it. And that July, um, I went on a seminar to Monte Carlo with Dr. Tony Quinn. And that changed my entire life. Everything that happened on that seminar changed my entire life. And as a result of that, it uh, ended up with me actually working with Tony and, and teaching alongside him. Because what I understood from what happened on that seminar was that he had the answer for everyone, that his material was so utterly groundbreaking that uh, the day after I had finished the seminar, I said, right, that's it. I jacked in my job. I said, no, I said, I, I, I want to come and work with you because I want to, I could see the magic and the power in what he was doing and the solution and the answer for everybody. 
And I got a very clear direction that it was part of my purpose to help him get that out there in the world. So I came to him and it was a funny conversation because I said to him, I said, I'll do anything, Tony. I said, I'll do anything. And he says, well, I need everything. I said, well, then I'll do everything. And that's sort of how it came about. But it was, um, it was very much over uh, a period of time where I was looking for the answer. And as soon as I found it, I said, right. And I think if you, if you ask for the answer and it's given to you, you've got to then follow that. Yeah, yeah. And you work, I mean, you are Tony's right-hand woman, I imagine. You're the person who works most closely with him. That is correct, yes. And uh... Yeah, and he's a, he's, he's a fascinating character. I've, I've, I mean, I've worked in the spiritual area for a long time, probably about 15 years now, and we do the magazine Positive Life. And I've always been keen on having a chat with him, you know, because it's not often you get, we don't get a lot of homegrown spiritual teachers in Ireland. Mm -hmm. You know, you look to people like Eckhart Tolle or Deepak Chopra uh, and all these kinds of teachers around the world. So it's great to have our own homegrown. So tonight I want to explore a little bit about about him and about his life. Um, When he left Ireland, uh, he did get into some, I heard a few things about like he was working in Belize, and he was working from projects indeed with the UN as well I think you mentioned to me yeah so can you just can you kind of bring us up to speed with what Tony Quinn did when he left Ireland and how his life I suppose we didn't hear much about it in Ireland you know it was just it was just kind yeah. of left where it was at that point so can you talk to us about you know how his life changed and what he got into when he left Ireland yeah absolutely now, I believe yeah that's right. Yeah. And I'd be delighted to, because I actually don't think people really know, like if, outside of Ireland on a global scale, what Tommy has achieved is incredible. Like it's absolutely spectacular what he's done. And he's, there's a number of different, so the Educo education model is uh, Tony's material. And it is the, the model that was at the core of a number of different things that happened on a global scale. So when you're talking about Belize there, um, a, a group of people who attended the, the Educo seminar uh, went down to Belize and Susan, who I can see there on the call, was, was one of those people. She's waving at us there now. She, um, she's over okay, like, there, Susan, give us a wave. she was very passionate about, um, you know, making a difference for the country of Belize. Very, 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 very passionate about that. And if I can explain the background to you, over 50 years, 50 different oil companies dry, drilled, sorry, that's the word, drilled uh, 50 dry wells. And there was very much a feeling that there is no oil down in Belize. But um, following the, attending an Aduka seminar, Susan Morris and um, Mike Usher and a number of other people came together and they were determined to make a difference for the country and to discover the oil, not just for the sake of discovering the oil, but because what it would mean for the country itself. And using the Aduco model, using what they learned on the seminar, using the power of the mind and going down there, they went and did something that is unheard of in the oil industry, where they actually struck oil on the very first go. And if you can imagine, they did it in, a, in an area the size of 500,000 acres of land, and they had to drill two wells the size of a dinner plate. And both of those hit oil, and then they continued to do so. And as a result of that, the, uh, the, the Aduco model at the core of that um, gained the attention of um, a group of people in the United Arab Emirates. So in turn, that resulted in a country to country alliance between the UAE and Belize, because they were so fired up by Tony's model, by what it meant, by the difference that it could make on a global level, that they wanted to work with Belize and um, on the basis of implementing this model in both countries. And as a result of that, in 2015, uh, there was a signing at the United Nations in New York, a bilateral treaty between the two countries, completely on the basis of Tony's work in the Aduco model. So, and I think, I think people might be surprised to hear that on a global scale of really what he's doing. And I think there's more, I, you know, there's more stuff happening on a global level in terms mm-hmm. of country to country, things that are going on at the moment, um, where these very um, big global leaders are seeing this model understanding that it could create the difference and create a new future for people and are so passionate about implementing it in their countries that they're coming together as a result of some of these projects so it's very exciting it's very very exciting it's great to kind of get that filled in you know because we don't hear that so much about them you know um i want to talk as well about what you touched on there was the, was the power of the mind um yeah and this is a big you know runs through all spiritual teachings but I did see a thing about Tony Quinn on the TV about him doing operations. There was operations. People were being operated on. I think it was on the Late Late Show. 
Yeah. Beforehand, he would bring them into a... I mean, I remember a woman getting operated on and talking to someone while she was being operated on. Uh, how come all that stuff just kind of went away? Like, what? You know, that's incredibly powerful. And I do. I have heard of those kind of operations being performed and people able to bring themselves yeah. into such a, a high state that the operation was, you know, performed without any pain, any anesthetic. So did those experiments continue or can you talk a bit about those? Well, I suppose the, the operations, and I, I, lo- I love talking about this and you'll, you'll know yeah. why in a second when we touch on it, but the operations were the beginning of, uh, they were actually what resulted in Tony's discovery of unconscious attention. So t- Tony did a master's um, with the university in London. And as a result of his research, he discovered unconscious attention. And unconscious attention is the attention of the unconscious mind. And what he discovered was he had worked with um, a doctor called Dr. Jack Gibson in Ireland, who um, had this ability to um, work with patients without anesthetic and and to work with them at scenes of car accidents and things like that. And Tony spent time with him, researching him and modeling out his pattern. And he discovered that the key to all of it was attention. And it was the attention, it was attention that became known as unconscious attention. So that's actually um, a new discovery in the field of the mind. But what happened with the operations was he was doing research for um, the university. So he needed a number of people to do the research. And uh, four people came forward to do it. And they were going to undergo operations without an anesthetic and uh, show that using the power of the greater mind, that actually using this mind power, they would be able to do that. And so that's what you would have seen on the Late Late Show and the people that came forward. And they were very big operations. There were operations sort of to very invasive ones. They're not ones that you could maybe fake not feeling pain. They were quite invasive operations. And what happened as a result of this, and this was incredible, is that when they were interviewed afterwards, they said that not only did they not feel pain, but they felt, they felt so good. They felt this power or this energy come through them that felt so good that they actually would have stayed in the operation if they could have because of this feeling that came through. So if you can, um, I suppose, to, to explain it a little bit more, it would be to explain to people that this power within the mind, there's different levels of this power. And the more of your mind, the secret to everything is using more of your mind. Right. If you can use more of your mind in any area of your life, you'll be more successful. You'll be a better partner. You'll be a better parent. You'll be more, you know, you'll you'll create whatever it is that you want. Mm -hmm. But not only that, there is a there's a a level beyond that where like we reach a level of unconscious attention where you can actually feel this power coming through. And the power comes through the greater mind and people who are trained in the Aduco model and in Tony's uh, material and and, uh, teachings are able to achieve those levels. But that would have been the start of the research, which led into then the seminars. So when Tony left Ireland, he started the seminars to um, actually to further research and see what would happen if in all different areas people used more of their minds, what was possible. So over a period of three years, he studied all the attendees of the seminars and tracked every area of their lives to see the results. And the results were absolutely incredible in terms of the business. It was 107 businesses involved in it. You know, in terms of people's personal finances over the three years went up on average about 364 percent. You know, their average, their ability to achieve their goals went up 67 percent. Their satisfaction with life went up 55 percent. So it was it was across all areas, but it was actually a very detailed study. And that was what when he left Ireland, he started the seminars and he did that research and that tracking, which has led to where we are today, very much in terms of the power seminars and the energy seminars, which are honestly out of this world with the results that people are getting. Mm -hmm. it's, It's gone very much into he's gone so far with the power and the energy into the area of self-realization, self-actualization. And we've had um, we've had people even recently come up, we had a Buddhist come on the seminar recently who said, you know, I spent a year in a cave to try and achieve this. And I come out here for 10 days. And she said, I go and, you know, I got everything I was looking for. And I've just come out of a cave after a year. So I just think it's it's incredible. Honestly, it's so spectacular the results that he's getting with people. Didn't end up back in the cave anyway. We got <laughs> no, she realized there was no point in being in the cave. <laughs> so um, what I want to talk about now is um, I want to come to a, a kind of a couple of the most amazing kind of success stories from, from Tony's work. You know, people who've worked with Tony and it's really affected their lives in a big way. 
And Susan, obviously, is one of those that we know about. But you might have a couple of other examples. Yeah. But just to say to people that um, I'm going to chat to Sarah for probably about another half an hour. And then the plan is that you guys can chat in some questions. So you just type your questions in and we'll do a Q&A with you guys in the second half. And we'll have about a half an hour of Q&A. OK. And um, but the question I want to ask you now, Sarah, is. We're in right now. We're in an interesting time in human evolution um, and you spoke about conscious attention and a lot of uh, kind of spiritual people who are following this path of spirituality and trying to evolve themselves are looking what's at what's happening in the world right now and they're wondering what is their responsibility how should they react to this type of uh, crisis that we have i mean do we do we um attempt to wake other people up? Do we bring people, do we bring it to their attention that all is not what it seems? Or do we just purely focus all our power and our energy on the solution? What, what is the teaching that comes from Tony and from yourself, do you think, around that? Well, I suppose what I would say about that is that, um, I mean, it should be a huge wake up call to people. What's going on out there at the moment should be a massive wake up call to people. And I think, um, you know, the reason for a lot of what, what is going on in the world right now is low levels of consciousness, that actually people are living at such a low level of consciousness as a lot of this stuff is happening. And um, I think the, it, from my perspective, what I would say is that it's actually about raising those levels of consciousness, raising the level of life force that people are operating from. That is the answer in all of this. And the solution is that power within people and drawing that out further and further and further. And I think what's, what's fascinating at the moment is that anybody who's been living in what we call sort of the matrix world or that, the, the structure that, that's out there in the world, even, even the educational model that's out there, um, what they're realizing right now or what they should be seeing right now is the fact that everything that they thought they could rely on you know, you know, has suddenly fallen apart. It's all crumbled down. So the structures that they were operating within weren't even stable. And, you know, people would have spoken about how, well, I, you know, I have this job that I have to do, or I have this commitment, or I have this place that I have to go, or all these things that you have to do. And then suddenly, in the blink of an eye, everything just stops. This virus comes in and stops everything. But I think what's more, or what I would look at more, is the, the, the virus of the mind, of people's minds, about getting caught up in all of this. And I think it's, it's very clear to see what can happen on a mass level where the collective consciousness gets into this and gets caught up in this um, negativity or, you know, fear around the virus or whatever it is. And I think that if people were really to tap into that power within, to draw that out and to live from that, we'd see the levels of consciousness raising and then suddenly that would solve everything because the answer to it is inside everyone. The answer is the power that's inside everyone. And the more that can be allowed out freely and unobstructed into the world, the, the, it will take care of everything it will actually perfect everything and once it once it has the ability to flow through everything it will perfect it and look after everything so that's what I would say in terms of I think you know it is a wake-up call it's most definitely a wake-up call but the solution is inside every single person the solution is drawing out that power and I we would very much see it as educating people how to do that in fact um uh more than ever more than ever and I'm so passionate about this more than ever I'm like I know the answer for people and I just want to share that with them. And I want to tell them, you know, there is somebody out there who's, who's doing work that can actually make a difference and change the world. And um, I would I, I'd be so passionate about sharing Tony's material and his teachings and saying, look, you know, if you are looking for an answer, if you want the solution, there is, there is a solution. There is an educational model there in place. There's a, an, a, an opportunity to spend time with Tony and, and learn his material and then go away with all of the tools and the solutions that you need so um yeah I think and I think it's a, I think it's a fascinating time at the moment because I don't think anything's ever going to be the same again but I also think I I've been I've been very much looking at this as a, as a golden opportunity I, I look around and I think there's so much opportunity for people out there at the moment if they can just see it well, I loved when we were met, we were meant to do this as a live event back in, was it March? Was That's it March? right, March, my yeah. goodness. So we were meant to do this in March and I was, it was the week that the government were saying they were going to shut stuff down. And that week I was quite gung-ho that we needed to gather 
because it's a spiritual event that I that we run all the time. And I thought we need to get people and gather and have a chat about this and calm people down kind of thing. And I phoned you and you said, yeah, let's go for it. This is a golden opportunity. You were all buzzed up. So I love that about, you know, when you work with people in this area and when you, in a way with like-minded people, we all kind of operate on that level. We know about our own inner power. But the word, um, you, I just wonder about this, unconscious attention was the term that you used. Mm -hmm. How much attention do you give what's happening at the moment? Because I would so much power in our attention. Do you give it no attention? Pretty much. I ignore the circumstances. I ignore the circumstances. And, and it's funny because if anybody calls me or I'm having a conversation with somebody in the Guinness, and I said, no, 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 I'm ignoring the circumstances. I don't want to know. And I've had, in a funny kind of way, I've had conversations with people who've called me. I'm like, oh, what about this and what about that? And I, I've literally been able to turn it around and say, well, what about this? And look at this opportunity. And what about this? And how, you know, and it is all on the, it, it's whatever you give your attention to grows and you always need to be focused in on the solution. And, and I think as well, it can be, um, and for people who are totally, who have no education or background in this area at all, I think it can be very reassuring for them to see that you're congruent in your, in your certainty with the answer. I think that's important for people as well. And honestly, it does not like it doesn't matter what's going on out there. I it's I I'm literally I feel unshakable because I have this unbelievable connection to this power inside. And that just tells me, look, I'm it's gonna take care of everything. And I think, well, okay. And you really you're you're able to do that. You you let it go to that extent. Do you do you have a little look at do you feel it's do you feel it's any way empowering to to gain knowledge about what's really going on? Or do you feel like, look, I don't need to know anything, I can just focus purely on this and move forward with the solution it's funny actually you use the word knowledge there so i can, <laughs> I can actually answer this now in different ways and say yeah. you know yeah. the, the knowledge that's out there how do how do we even know if, what knowledge is or whether it's correct you know yeah. knowledge is just an accumulation of information up to this point in time and there is a difference between knowledge and intelligence and i would say that uh, what people don't realize is that we have this innate intelligence within this power is innately intelligent and when you tap into it and you connect with it and communicate with it, you start to get insights and intelligence from it that are completely different to what knowledge might tell you. And knowledge is always knowledge always goes up to a certain point because knowledge eventually becomes dead because it, it, it can only ever you can only ever know something up to the point in which it's happened, whereas intelligence operates within an unknown sphere. If, I, I don't know if that's making sense now, but I think if people no, are actually draw like if we look at I, I explain it this way i would say our yeah. educational models that we have in the world are all about taking knowledge from the outside cramming it in in the mistaken understanding that's somehow going to make us better whereas what the educo education model is about is about drawing out from within so you don't need to look to the outside to cram in you're actually drawing out intelligence innate intelligence from within it's a really it's a very it's a beautiful way to operate because at the moment we're all you know, a lot of people are going out and they're arguing about what they find because they have different opinions about what it means and what it, the impact it's going to have. So I remember once I did a meditation a few weeks ago and I heard a voice say to me, the only source of news is within your own self, your own heart. That's the only source of news that you need to listen to. Um, and I, tell, I think that's really empowering. So I love that. I love the way you're saying that's beautiful. So now we go back to tony's work and i want to bring out if you can the two most well actually before we go there i want to ask you about when you sat directly in front of him and you did that seminar and that pivotal moment where you just went yeah. wow this guy is really onto something what was that moment so that was as i said on the seminar in monte carlo in 2017 so i went out very and i very much had an intention when i went out i said i'm i'm not coming back from this seminar something is going to, this is, this is going to be it now. Something's going to change and it's going to make that, you know, I'm going to find that purpose and that path in life. So throughout the seminar, the seminar at that time was 12 days actually. And throughout the seminar, Tony was talking about a number of different areas and everything that he spoke about just, it, it blew my mind. I was getting deeper and deeper and deeper into it. And on the second last day of the seminar, the night before, I remember we were staying in a hotel and I was sharing a room with someone else and we were chatting and I said, you know what? I, I said, I just know that something is going to happen tomorrow. I'm going to walk in there. Something is going to happen tomorrow. It's going to change everything and life will never be the same. 
And I just, I, I knew, I, I, I just had this absolute surety that something was going to happen that day. So I went into the class and, and Tony was going through, um, you know, it, there, there was, he was talking to us a little bit and then he said he wanted to do some energy work with somebody. And before he'd even said who it was, I was up off my seat because I thought, I know it's going to be me. So he, he did the work with me. And literally what it was, was that um, he is, Tony's incredibly unique in this area. I've never seen anyone who can do this, where he can flow the energy to a person. I mean, at such a pure, such a high level, such an absolutely pure level that he can flow it to a person in a where it comes out as literally a white light that can hit them. And that can blow everything out of their mind and raise their level of consciousness in one go. So what happened was I stood in front of him he put out his hand and I literally got hit with this white light and I fell backwards onto the floor. And as I was there, I'd been hit by this white light and it was just, the only way I can describe it. It was as though everything just dip, disappeared out of my mind. Every, my mind went totally clear, but I was hyper aware. It was like a heightened state of consciousness where I was hyper aware. And I was on the floor. I was only sort of lying down for maybe a very short period of time. And when I got up, everything had changed. So people in the room looked different to me. And I looked around the room and I could see different levels of brightness in people. I could literally pick up on what people were thinking, how they were feeling. I saw, um, I saw there was um, somebody in a, a little boat out in the sea outside and I could literally feel their energy connected to mine. I just, I, it was just, as I said, in, the, in, in a split second, I got this download, this, the white light brought with it a, a download of, um, intelligence and it told me um, the answer for everybody it told me the path that people should be walking on it told me um, what was possible where how it could do and it showed it literally showed me how if this power was allowed into the world into the world what would happen for everybody um, and I also as well um, was I'm standing beside Tony at this point so Tony's here beside me and I was looking out and Tony said he says it's a matter of interest he says you know when you look at me what do you see and I turned around to look at him and it was just uh, the word that came out of my mouth was perfection and I could see what who he was what he was about how um, his work would make the difference for everybody and in that moment I knew that uh, nothing else counted nothing else that I was involved in nothing else in my life would really make a difference and that if I was to walk this path or follow the purpose that I always believed was there for me it would it would mean letting go of all the other stuff but it, it actually funnily enough it, it, it was so it was just so incredibly easy because it, there was such a certainty that came with that because it was such a power and force and, and the light and everything that it showed me. Um, and so as I said, that's what happened. I, I dropped everything else and I came and I can honestly say my, my life since then has been so incredible. Like, you know, I, I mean, I thought, I thought things were good up until that point, but it was a whole other level of, of living and in every single area. And, um, and I love, I absolutely love um, watching him work and seeing him get the results of people. I love teaching alongside him. I love every area of my job. I just think it's, I, you know, I, I feel like the luckiest girl in the world. and <laughs> I feel so unbelievably privileged. And there's something magical. There's something so incredible to see someone on the first day of a seminar. And then on day 10, to see the transformation and the way that their whole life has changed. They look different. They're lighter, they're brighter. And it's, um, and it doesn't matter. This is funny. It doesn't matter how many times I see him do the work with people and do the energy work. I'm blown away every single time. And just when I think, you know, oh my God, that was amazing. He goes and takes it to a whole other level the next time so um and then wow. since then i have this i have this um connection to it and I, it, it's it's a guide and it's a direction and it's like having a, a communication that sort of um tells you the steps to take and i very much wait then to to be guided and directed in, in what it is that's meant to happen from that and i just follow that and then it becomes super easy because you don't have to think about anything <laughs> I mean, that's a really huge moment in your life, right? That just sounds mm. like something out of Star Wars or something like that. Yeah. Whack, yeah. okay? Yeah. Now, I just want to ask you, when you came back to your life in Ireland and you came back from the seminar, did you stay on that high? And how did you, how did that, you know, how did that integrate into your life? And then I want to ask you then to follow on from that and tell me, just, just give me some simple examples how you use that, you know the title tonight that we were working with was the presence that you drop into that presence when you have a big decision in your life 
Mm. Can you tell me a couple of pivotal moments where you've it's really led you the right way? Yeah, well, I suppose, well, I, I would actually say it's not even, it's not even something you drop into. It's, it's with you all of the time and you have that, you have that connection. So when I came home to Ireland, I, um, well, I suppose I quit my job. That was, you know, I did a few things that I moved out of where I was living. I did, you know, and anything that didn't feel right, I literally, I, I would, it, it was like feeling my way through everything. So everything that didn't feel right, I stepped away from. And then everything that did feel right, I, I kept or I, I, I incorporated in. And then I just started to, to operate from that space. Um, and it is, I suppose, um, it's, you, you live, you're living within it. It's, you know, you, you can, um, rather than dropping in and out of it, it's like you can, you can walk outside. I can walk outside and I can walk alongside the sea or look at the trees. And I feel this unbelievable power and connection. And it's like you're, you're, you're tuned into this higher frequency and you're, you're, you're vibrating with it. And then it's, it's like nothing. I, I'm always amazed by this. And I think, gosh, people walk outside their houses and they look at the sea and they see the sea. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if they could just see what's really there, if they could see everything that's there, if they can reach that level of awareness, they'd be blown away. And it's like, um, it's, it's this unbelievably beautiful tune in um, moment with it. It's like, it, it, it's, and I'm trying to I'm trying to articulate this in a way that makes sense. It's like you just suddenly merge and unify with everything, and it's such an incredible feeling. And it's only goodness. It's only um, it's it's just this higher level of living and higher level of being. But then you know, there's been different um, even in fun kind of ways. I had I've been looking for a house. This is even a fun sort of thing. Just mm -hmm. to say, I've been looking for a house, and I've been looking for a long time. And I had this idea of what it was. And then suddenly one day I found this house and I walked inside and I said, this is the house. I said, this is it, you know, and, I, and when I walk into it now, I'm in my house at the moment, when I walk into that house now at the moment, it's, um, I just feel this incredible, like literally it's, it's like living within the magic or living within the presence of it because of where it came from. Um, and, but I think it, there's so many different areas of life that it comes into, whether it's with the work, whether it's with somebody, whether, you know, um, you could be working with somebody on a seminar, you could be um, dealing with something and you'll get the guidance and direction, or you'll know what it is to say to them, or you'll be with somebody and you, um, you'll pick up on, on something or it will start to communicate. And it's a bit like you disappear, Sarah doesn't get involved and then it jumps in and starts to communicate and it can know things that certainly I wouldn't know. It can pick up on things that I wouldn't have a clue about, but suddenly I know the answer to things or I'll tune into something or I'll, you know, I, I had a situation where, um, this is another just it's a funny example where somebody was dealing with something and they couldn't understand, there was something in the way and they couldn't understand what it was. And one day I happened to be with them and they were talking to this person. And as I stood beside the person, it told me the answer of what was in the way. So I said to them afterwards, I said, does this mean anything? Because it didn't mean anything to me. I said, does this mean anything to you? And they were like, oh my gosh, that's the answer. That's what it is. Um, and it can operate in that way. And it's, but it's always in service of, um, I would be very aware of the fact that it, it has a purpose. It has a consciousness. It has a direction. And it's not about Sarah trying to, um, manipulate it to her will it's about actually Sarah letting go and flowing with its will and purpose and um, the all will that actually it's, it's it is about everybody I fell in love with everyone in the world when I got hit with that light it was I saw everybody differently I had this unbelievable appreciation for that magic inside them I have had this unbelievable appreciation for Tony and what he could do and to draw that out in people. And it is, it's like this big burst of love that comes forward for everybody. And it's so exciting. And I just think, imagine a world, imagine the world where people operate at that level, where it's actually power to power relationships, where it's an energetic connection between people, where we drop all of the thoughts and all of the things that the opinions and the judgments that get in the way of people. And suddenly there's this free flow of energy, you know, and, Tony would talk about um, how if you look at the leaders of the world today, you know, even in government, we're set up with an opposition party. It's all about division and disunity and tearing people apart, whereas this is all about bringing people together. The opposition thing is such a crazy system. Mm -hmm. but what yeah. you're talking about there, you know, I start seeing people like Mozart and, and, and great composers and mm -hmm. Einstein and getting into that flow state, getting into that super creative, super conscious it's a beautiful state to be in, you know, and yeah. let's talk now about 
So on the seminars, you work with Tony, you sit with Tony now and you see the people coming in. Give me maybe one or two examples of someone you've seen come in who just, who just made a complete A to Z turnaround. You just thought, wow, this person's life is completely transformed through this work. Can you give me one or two examples of people that have really stood out for you? Yeah, well, oh gosh, there's so many of them now that we can talk about. But one, one person, I suppose, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use two different examples. Well, we've heard about Susan who came out, and like Susan and Mike transformed a country. And the beautiful thing about the two of them was that it was always about the transformation of Belize. It was never about going in and finding oil and, you know, taking it out and, and for, for some other gain. And um, but also there was, um, and this is actually Josh had been out before, actually before me on the seminar. But Josh is uh, Josh Stewart is a guy who came out on the seminar, and he was a uh, a bush pilot out in Africa, and he came on the seminar, and he came up with the idea and the vision for a private aviation company called XJet, and he was so like he he literally had filled him up completely this idea of XJet. And um, he was so determined to become the number one private aviation company in the world. And he had a target and everything he had set for it. And he, had, um, he came, he took the material that he had used on the seminar and he went on to create XJet, which did go on to become the number one aviation company in the world. And uh, he went from a valuation of zero to a billion dollars within a five year period, which is unheard of. Now he had no business experience. He had no background. He had a vision and he had this power and this drive and this energy. And he's now out, um, he's even leapt onto a whole other scale. And he's out there on a global level, working with global leaders, uh, bringing them together on the basis of the Educo model. And we have so many examples of incredible things like that, but we also have, you know, people who, <clears throat> you know, we've had a 17 year old, kids who've come out in the seminar who reach these incredible levels of awareness and consciousness. Unbelievable. So have gone from zero to this level in, in a very short period of time. We've had, uh, we had an incredible example of a guy who um, was, you know, he was suffering with mental health and he's literally transformed his whole life around on the basis of what he learned. And he's so passionate about it now because he says, gosh, I have these tools. I have this unbelievable ability to tap into this power that I can actually draw up you know, there's so many people in the world who who suffer with mental health or with anxiety or all these types of things. And the training that Tony does with people can get them to a level where they can actually draw up this power and they can experience the, the truest nature of who they are, their own true nature, and draw up things like happiness and well-being and health that suddenly in an instant blows everything else away, which is, you know, if people really knew, if people knew that it, they had this ultimate solution i think they'd be i think people's minds would be absolutely blown away mm. and now i i want to talk a little bit about the expressions yes it's a term that you use about yeah i mean is the tony's work is meditation a big part of tony's work is that a big aspect to it or is the expression something even deeper um talk to us about what the expressions are I know you have to, you obviously have to go and do the event to really get a sense of it, but give us yeah. as much as you can in this, in this format. about Absolutely. The yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we spoke, we spoke earlier on, or I mentioned earlier on about unconscious attention, right? So uh, as I said before, the secret to everything is using more of your mind, right? And the more of your mind that you can use, the more successful you become in any area of your life. But there is a point that you can get to where it's actually full consciousness, where you're using so much of your mind, your whole mind, that you're able to actually tune into your spirit within or call on your power, your energy body um, and draw it out. And what you then discover is when when your mind is totally in this, um, when, when that level is so high that you can actually tune into um, your spirit and call on it to express its nature to you. So when we talk about our true nature, it's an innate nature of goodness, of love, of unity, of bliss, of happiness, of health, you know, intelligence, everything like that. And there is a level that, that people can get. And Tony has done this now with um, there are 93 people, 93 people who can do this, uh, which I think is spectacular because, I mean, we spoke about it before, whereas Buddha talked about, um, you know, enlightenment and Buddha would have like had his eightfold path. Um, I would have uh, laid that out for people, but how many people did he actually 
get to that level. And Tony so far in the time that he's been doing it has done it with 93 people. And that's only because we've only had 93 people. It'll be bigger numbers when we go forward. But um, it's the ability, it's the ability for a person to actually draw up their spirit and have it be expressed and experience the nature of who they are. So the nature of who we are, our real self, our spirit within is, as I said, one of goodness and intelligence and happiness and bliss and love and unity. And what when we talk about the expressions, and uh, um, as I said, this is something that I'm going to do live because I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm actually going to show people this at the event when we can uh, when we can do it live mm -hmm. is that it's the ability to actually call it up and have it be expressed and to experience it. So what we would do is we would call upon it, draw up our spirit and then have it express the different expressions. So things like um, happiness, love, unity, etc. And then we can demonstrate that to people, the actual the power of that when it comes from us. And it, it's an incredible, um, it's incredibly unique. And it's also, it's, a, it's an incredible thing to watch or to experience. So I'm really excited for the live event to actually share that with people so they can see it. Because, and, and Tony is very much, he is somebody who says, you know, there's no point in talking about something unless you can actually show it or you can show the results or you can show it to people in a, in a tangible way. And he will walk into a seminar and tell people exactly what he's going to do. And my God, does he deliver? Does he come through and actually show people and say, right, you know, <clears throat> when it comes to flowing the energy and the power, he then very much delivers on that. So he gives people the experience. They, mm -hmm. get, they, they get to yeah. experience the expressions. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we just before we're going to go to questions in a minute from people, which is great. We get a chance to, for people to engage. Um, just in terms of what's happening, we'll touch back on the world again right now. Do you feel that this consciousness, this, um, that people are going to have greater access to this, that there's some kind of collective shift happening? Do you feel that's happening at the moment? and that we are moving into a maybe higher aspect of ourselves well i i think what's happening at the moment is pe people are being shown as i said how the structures out there don't work how um the structures that we have at the moment within the matrix world aren't reliable they don't work they're actually built on castles of sand but um and there is and when i when i'm actually experiencing what we're seeing particularly with the work that tony does we've had a massive interest in it we've we're, people are so open now to hearing all of this to actually they, they're they're kind of looking around themselves going oh gosh you know there has to be something more there has to be an answer and i think that people are very much more open to it and open to hearing more about it and actually going to to experience it as such uh, so i do think and i and as i said the, the reason why we're having all of the problems in the world at the moment is are those levels of consciousness. So it's the raising of those levels of conscious, consciousness that are going to make the difference. And that's key. And that's what, as I suppose, the, the Tony's work is all about, is about allowing people to do that and actually training them to raise their levels of consciousness. And then that will in turn have an impact. But I think we're at a point right now where, you know, we're sort of being shown very much what, what's possible if we're not careful, um, uh, and also what uh, where the solution actually lies, and I think um, you know people people are used to technology advancing, so people would think, well, you know, my smartphone has to advance every six months. If there's not a new iPhone, what's going on? But have we ever considered the evolution of the human being? I mean, are we more evolved than we were? And in fact, thousands of years ago, we would have been much more evolved, and people would have lived at a much higher level of consciousness. And what's actually happened? is that those levels of consciousness have decreased over a period of time to such a low level that we're at a crucial time right now in terms of raising everything up again. And I think that's what people should realize and, and be told, you know, the solution isn't going to be found within any of the structures that are out there. The solution aren't the leaders who are out there. The truest leader, the truest leader would come from the power, would be able to speak to people, unify them, and tap into their collective consciousness. And there's not a leader in the world today that's actually doing that. So I think that's the big difference. So upgrade the human, let go of the scriptures. Yes. Okay, brilliant. And that brings us right up. We're about half past eight now. So if people want to type in questions in the um, chat bar there, it should be easy enough for people to do. And if anybody has a question, feel free to type away and we'll get Sarah to answer your questions for another half hour or so.
Okay, hi everybody. Um, hi, nice to join you. Um, yeah, I have a couple of questions, uh, Sarah. Um, I guess because this is a new, it's not a new concept to me, raising consciousness. Um, but um, I, I guess I'd, I'm curious to know, um, having you know, done lots of journeys into consciousness and different modalities of self-awareness, spirituality, etc. Um, how Tony Quinn's distinguishes or the Educo method is distinguishes itself from a lot of other consciousness raise, raising um, processes. Okay, well, um, I suppose I would answer that by saying um, there's a lot and there are there's a lot of people out there who are talking about this in terms of, you know, raising levels of consciousness and a lot of different disciplines out there. I think or my what I would say about it is the difference with Tony is that his he has a model and a series of steps, a very, very much a foolproof series of steps that literally if you take them, you can get the results. And as I say, without knowing every single um, option that's out there and without getting into a comparative thing on it, I would say from my own personal experience, the beauty of the Aduka model is that um, it is a very um, a clear structured series of steps that a person can take to get the results. And it's also, it's not, it's scientific. It's not hit and miss. It's very much, well, if you take these steps, you get these results. And we see that from the results that we get with people on the seminar. As I said, we've had a number of different people who've come from different modalities or come from different backgrounds and gone and done different things. And what they've experienced on the seminar has been um, a permanent shift, very much a permanent shift, but also a structure and a series of steps that keeps them with it, if that makes sense. And I said, without knowing every single modality out there, I can only speak to what the feedback we get from people on the seminars and my own personal experience. I would have done a lot of things before I found Aduco and Tony. And I can honestly say that as soon as I, as soon as I found Aduco, I stopped searching because I had the, the answer and the structure there for me. But what would make Tony very unique and what he can do is that, and this is literally from, and I can say this from experience of working with them. There are so many gurus out there who talk about this area and there's so many disciplines and they all talk about this area. So, but I think with Tony, he very much can do something. I've never seen anybody do the level of energy work and that power flow that I've never seen anybody else do it to the level that he can do it out there in the world, certainly. And, um, and interestingly, Tony used to do the seminars for free. And what he found was when he actually started charging for the seminars, people put a much bigger value on it and he started to get much greater results with it. Tony used to actually, as I said, do all of this for free, but it, it changed. There was a change with it when people put a value on it and there was very much a, um, a different result that came from it. But um, I would think even um, uh, in relation to what, what is out there at the moment, I would think, gosh, that the, 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 the seminars themselves are actually quite uh, incredible value, funnily enough. But that's just um, from, I would definitely see that. But, um, and I think it's not necessarily, um, what would I say? I think probably with people out there at the moment, um, if they are, we find that if we have a lot of people who've come in from different disciplines, I said, I mentioned the girl who'd spent the year in a cave that to be able to come in in 10 days and get the result is incredible. It's such, an, it's such a um, short period of time to do that. And I think people would appreciate that as well. So I hope that's answering your question. Yeah, thanks, Patrice. Um, we're gonna move on to another question here. There's a few more people trying one up. I'm gonna go with Donald. Do you make a distinction between raising consciousness and just being consciousness? Are we not already essentially consciousness? So do you make a yeah, distinction I, between raising and being? Yes. Uh, well, well, no, what I would say is I think people live at different levels of consciousness. You know, I think, you know, a baby has a different level of consciousness to an adult. I think we all have, we live at different levels of consciousness and we operate at different levels of consciousness. So you are, by virtue of the fact that you can actually find your way around and you can do things and you can, you know what you're doing, you are conscious, but it's about raising that level to full consciousness. It's a bit like how I would describe it is, um, or Tony describes it in this way, he said, it, it's like turning up the dimmer switch in a room. So the more that you turn up the dimmer switch, the more the light comes in and the more you raise the levels. And at, at some point on that dimmer switch, there is light coming in, but the more that you can turn it up to full blast, that's what we're talking about. Uh, there is a, a good question there I wanted to go back to from Josh Royley. Um, he says, you know, it is obviously important to attend the seminar, 
But if if you want more people to experience the Aduka model, why isn't it at least partially accessible to the general population? Um, he gets why you don't want to give too much away, but if people got a little bit exposed to it, it might, you know, he's saying maybe even a, a digital doorway, um, you know, to allow more people to access it. Probably a valid point. What do you think, Sarah? Well, yeah, was, was, we don't we don't know what's going to happen, and I think things could things could change, and um, in the future, certainly, you know, we're we're very much in the unknown at the moment, and one of the reasons as well is that you know even from our perspective, getting out there online and doing interviews like this or doing things, it is it's all a, it's all um in a in a in a the service of actually educating people more about what is possible, and I think um. Uh, we're very much in a place of the unknown at the moment with everything that's going on. So who knows what's going to happen in the future? But I would think that, and one of the reasons as well is that, you know, we do, we do the seminars in different locations around the world. And part of it is as well as actually taking people out of their normal environment, taking them out of any of their reference points and actually giving time and space and 10 days to go and do that, to actually extract yourself from all the known and the norm and the reference points and take that time out. And we find that that actually delivers a better result for people. Brilliant. It's, um, there's a, a chap here, Eric wants to ask, um, can you say something about if people have the power already or do you need to build it up from a lower level to reach a higher level? Well, I think, you know, everybody has an energy that runs around inside their body, like by virtue of the fact that your heart is beating and your blood is pumping, there's an energy that's doing something for you. But as we've never really considered the power of that power or the, the, the more to do with that energy. And I think that um, what can happen with a person is that it can get covered over. Like I think when children come into the world, children come in, can come in with very high levels of this, but actually it can get covered over over time. And um, I, you know, with the best will in the world, sometimes parents want the best for their children. But what can happen is, you know, a, a child comes into the world free, but you know, they without intentionally doing it, what can happen that can get covered over in them. And actually, it would be incredible to think what would be possible if a parent was able to write, raise a child within this power and actually even communicate on a power to power level and allow the child to to progress in that way. So, um, yeah, I think it can get covered over in people, but I think it's all about uncovering it and allowing it out. The power is inside every person, but it's just as to how much it's expressed. There's a good one here that I, I, would, I probably would ask myself, actually. Can you give some information on the structure of the seminar, how it works? OK, well, there's well, I suppose there's there's a number of different elements to it. It has um, yeah, so it, there's 10 days overall. It has there are different there's three different sessions in the day and I teach a couple of sessions and then Tony does the main session in the day. And there's a number of practical elements to it. There's a number of uh, where Tony will, will do a bit of teaching and then there's a lot of energy work involved in it as well. So and each day is structured in a way that you take the steps in a particular order in a particular way every single day to make that progression. It's a little bit like a continuum. And we start everybody out here on the continuum and throughout the seminar, we move them along, raising those levels of consciousness through the exercises that we do. And Tony, if you can imagine, Tony has spent, um, you know, he spent seven months meditating on a mountaintop. He's done all sorts of disciplines. He's done martial arts. He's done um, explore the key. He's done he's done yoga. Tony actually introduced yoga to Ireland. He brought yoga to Ireland in the 1970s, and um, he's done all the heavy lifting in terms of working through all the possible things that would work for this. And then what he's done is he's structured everything. He's structured it all into such a way that he now has a refined structure of steps that people take, and then we take those steps over the 10 days in the seminar, culminating then obviously in um, the energy work. And that leads us on now to John O'Connor here. Um, did the Aduco seminar in Monaco in 2000 and loved it, no one like Tony. The new move into energy seminars, can you explain a bit about those? So the seminar has probably moved on a lot since, since John. It has, yeah. So he just wants to know how is it, how is it, how is it being updated? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I suppose when for a number of years, Tony would have done seminars around um, the success and results side of it. Right. So if you think about it, your, your greater mind power can be used for successful living. Right. So it can actually be applied to success, results, uh, goal achieving. And he would have done a lot of work in that area. And what happened was um, back in 2017, um, he got a direction 
on taking the seminars in the direction of going more into the energy work with people. And he was given um, an insight into how to do that in a new way in terms of the flow of energy and things like that. So it's moved further on from the successful living. That's still, an, that's still part of the seminar. So it's, it is definitely still part of the seminar. But now we have this quantum leap forward where there's much more focus on the power and the energy and the results that people get from reaching that level of self-realization and actualization. So it's um, for anybody who hasn't been out in a while and hasn't been out, um, yes, it's very much more focused on the energy and um, it's quite spectacular on that front. Wow, okay, brilliant. And this is a good question here. Um, outside of the seminar, are there one or two key tips that you can give someone right now to implement into their daily lives that will raise their own levels of consciousness? Go to Gandalock Lake. Yeah, I would say get get out get out of your thoughts, get out of your thoughts, and just yeah, and um, use the be, what I would say is be careful what you put your attention into. You know, be, be very careful what you put your attention into because what where your attention goes, it grows. And um, so, and I would say on a very practical level to people, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't be watching too much news. I wouldn't be getting into any of that stuff, and I would be keeping myself very much. Um, I mean, honestly, what a golden opportunity we have at the moment to where everything is shut down. You know, you don't have to go in and do that job at that desk at that time. You can totally restructure your, your life and your day. And, and, and I think I actually think that everything's gotten a bit calmer, which is which is marvelous. But I would say stay away from all the, the news, the newspapers, getting in line, getting into the social media, fill your head with good stuff. Brilliant. That's a really good answer. Thanks, Sarah. So I'm just going back over these here um okay structure of the seminar we have that yeah this is a similar question to the one we had earlier but why is joan is asking why is it why is our default to have a low energy frequency level why has it dis decreased over time as you described if we have the power why don't we know how to use it that is a brilliant question. Why don't we? Well, I actually think that our, we're, not, we're not educated as a society about it. When we're born, does anyone come in and tell us about this power? Are we told about it in school? You know, even, even within religions, you know, are, are, they, they talk about things that they talk around things. But actually, are, it, has, any, has anybody ever been told, you have this power within, here's how to access it. If you live from it, that's the way to actually live. And I think it's just over time, language has gotten like we've had interpreters get in the way. So people have interpreted things differently and language has gotten in the way. And I think a lot of it has been lost through um, through millennia over the change in language, over the interpretation of things in, um, you know, if you look at religions, we, we look to an interpreter of a religion to tell us what it is that we should be um, understanding. Whereas when it comes to the power, it should be a direct connection with it. There shouldn't be an interpreter or somebody in the way. It should be actually a direct connection with the power. And, um, and I think it's just, um, as I said, over millennia, it's gotten lost and it's just gotten covered over. Um, but now we're, we're at a point where it's about uncovering that again. Hope that answers that. Um, now from Tim Davis, how many can attend a seminar? Simple question. Um, well, actually, any amount. I think we could we could we could cope with any amount of people on a seminar. To be honest with you, um, so it's only limited by you know the number of people who want to come along. I would say. Um, no one's there at the moment, so I'd like to ask. We're coming close to finishing, but before we do, we've another ten minutes to go. So anybody wants to throw a question up, feel free. What's Tony's plans for the future? Is there something kind of going on at the moment, and what's he up to right now? Um, well, at the moment, I suppose Tony is like the rest of us. He's uh, he's um, observing the the restrictions at the moment. But um, I suppose he's working every day. He's meditating. He's um, getting insights. He's he's uh, writing. All of that stuff is happening at the moment. And I, there is very much. I would believe that um, when we come to do the seminars again, when we open up again and we start doing them, they will they will have taken a new evolution or they would have le they will have leapt or leaped forward um, in terms of um, where they're at as to what that is at the moment I think that's still being downloaded I think the, the insights are still coming in on that 
but um, yeah, I think we're we're preparing we're preparing for a very exciting next seminar. And I think after everything that has happened in the world and after um, what people getting a bit of a wake up call, I think it's going to be very very different. And I think I also think that there's um, uh, very much uh, a movement towards a new level. So yes. And Tony has always been, what I will say about him, he's always been way ahead of the curve. And I'd say Tony's always been light years ahead of anybody else. So I think we're going to see some, some incredible, incredible momentum and, and leaps forward in the next 12 months. Sounds amazing. Um, just on a very simple level. Um, oh yeah, so we have a question here from Donald as well. But before we go to Donald, I'm just going to ask you, just nutrition. Does Tony touch on nutrition? Does he have a special diet? Yeah, do you guys follow anything along those lines? He does. And um, everything that Tony is involved in, if I, you know, and I, I have to say this, I've never met anyone so disciplined in my entire life. He is the most incredibly disciplined person. And everything that he does is in service of raising that level of life force or, you know, every, every food that he eats, every uh, supplement that he takes, even the training, the types of training that he does. So the other areas that Tony is involved in is obviously he does the Aduco Health Supplements and he has the Aduco Gym both of which are all structured and put together in a way that raises a person's level of life force. So he's very much about, um, yes, eating the right type of diet and taking the right supplements um, raising your level of life force, doing the training in the gym. And honestly, I, you know, I, if you saw him, like if you like, and anybody who hasn't seen him in a while, but if you, the shape that man is in is incredible it's incredible and i i'll tell you a, you know a, a fun story in terms of um last year when we were in monte carlo he came down onto the beach to go for a swim and i've never seen a group of people literally jaw drop and go in my life it was because they were blown away by the shape that he was in and he is um he's probably in as good shape as he was maybe um 50 years ago but it's all down to the diet, to the training, to everything that he does in service of that. So yes, he would he would talk about eating high life force foods. So that would be um, you know natural foods, um, foods that are like you know salads, pure pure foods, fruits, things like that as well. Uh, that would be very important. But yeah, well, maybe a quite a, a raw diet in the sense that's what I'm getting. Yeah, at, yeah. Raw, okay. And he actually he actually would you believe he he gets an insight on the diet to eat. Okay. Um, Donald is asking, does Tony focus very heavily on happiness? And Sarah, what's your feeling on happiness? So he's got happiness in block letters and he wants to know. Happiness, okay. Well, you know what? Here's what, here's what I'll tell you what I know about happiness. Here's what I'll tell you. Um, I, I am, I'm ridiculously happy anyway. I'm sort of like, honestly, I'm, I'm one of those sort of like people that you meet and I just like, it's, I'm just exuberantly happy normally, but I, when, when we do the expressions, and that's one of the expressions that we do, and I'm really excited for people to come along and see this live when we get a chance to do it live. But when we do the expressions, there's a level of happiness that comes. It's an innate level of happiness or joy or just total exuberance that comes from you. That's like nothing else people have experienced ever before. And, you know, most people will do something in the attempt to make them happy. In fact, I would go as far as to say is everything that we do in our lives is in some shape or form an attempt to make us happy. And what I discovered when um, I, I did the work with Tony, when you can call on your true nature and draw it up, this happiness just comes up innately on its own, that actually at the core of our being, we're innately happy, that we don't need to think about something, you know, you, you can think about something to make you happy, but if you understand that your real self, who you are at the core of your being is innately happy, then all you need to do is tap into that and it comes out. But I mean, I would say not, not necessarily that I focus on it as such, but I just think it's a natural state to be in. And when your energy is high and your power is high, you find that you are naturally happy anyway. And you're sort of giggling for no reason and walking around the place. You're definitely a great example of it, Sarah. <laughs> um, does Tony have his own ketogenic diet? um we've i've touched on that there but just this person has been a bit more um, well i suppose T tony would have um and again he was way ahead of his time with this when tony uh did the ketogenic diet or the fat and protein diet years ago nobody was doing it and now um i think uh people are people are realizing and understanding that a bit more i know in the aduco gym they that's one of the diets that uh, he's put together for that as well so it is it is um available to people if they want to go train in the gym yeah, and Kiva asks, I mean, is it is it is it a personalized diet for people 
or are we all supposed to be consuming generally the same things? Um, well, I would say I do think I do think that um, it's different diets for different people. And I think Tony would say that as well as that, like different different backgrounds and different um, Body types, genealogy yeah. and everything would come into it as well but in general you know eating high life force foods like eating um a, a, an orange just off the tree is has more life force than say eating or drinking orange juice out of a carton those kind of things okay so um anyone else got a last question now we're going to be winding it up with a few minutes to go okay um so sarah for people who want to follow up on this work you can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram, and we're, we're getting much more active online and social media, as I, and I, I'm learning a lot about all this sort of stuff as well. Um, so you can, you can check us out online, but we do have the website, and if anyone wants to contact me, please feel free to email me. I would be delighted to talk to anyone about the seminars, about the work that Tony's doing, about anything in relation to what we spoke about tonight. I just, I honestly, it's a bit like when you have the answer, when you've been, and I feel so privileged to have, um, well, one, to work with Tony and to be involved in this, because I know what a difference, I know what an incredible difference it makes for people and what a difference it can make in the world and how we can actually bring in a new future as a result of all of this. And I, you know, I um, uh, would be delighted as said, to talk to anybody. And I love to share it with people. You know, it's, ultimately it's over to people as to what they're looking for, but I think everybody should hear it and at least know the opportunity out there. And I see, actually, I've just looked at the chat box and I see a question. And it's a great question. It's a great question. I'm going to answer it. It says, why a duco? Well, a duco comes from the Latin word and it means to draw out from within. And that's ultimately what Tony is about. He's about drawing out that real self, that power, that intelligence from within. So that's why it's a duco. Beautiful. Okay. Would Tony do a Zoom with us? We are going to work on that, John. Good <laughs> Sarah's going to go and talk to him now and tell him how amazing I am. And he's <laughs> And Kevin, so thanks very see, much. The beauty about this is that it's recorded. So, you'll, you know, we'll get to see it or people will get to, um, to share it. Well, we've been streaming live on Facebook as well. So that's great. Oh, so brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. So we'll have the video afterwards as well for people Super. and we can share that also. Um, so we're coming. We have a couple of minutes. And I just want to say thanks so much, Sarah, for doing this tonight. This was great. Oh, thank you, Paul. Honestly, it's so honestly, it's so marvelous to get out there and talk. And I know you've got a great platform out there, and you're very much about sharing all sorts of good stuff with your with your group and getting it out there online. So I'm delighted um, to have the opportunity to come on. It's brilliant. Absolutely delighted to have you. We'll see you again soon. Hopefully next week online again. Thank Man, you. Paul. Thanks so much, Paul. Thank you. See you. Bye bye. That was beautiful. Thank you.